come today expecting to get something? Or did you come today to hear another boring story, the same jokes and the, the same person, and then, you know, how quick can we get out of here for lunch? There is nothing that God is keeping away from you. But we sometimes have a problem receiving. Because the church, the religious church, has taught us that we need to work really hard to be worthy. And there's a lot of confusion in the, the, the grace movement, we can say that, that they think it's all done. Well, yeah, there's some parts that are done, and there's some parts that we still need to receive. Anybody need to get saved in here today? Does everybody have a relationship with God? Okay. Do you know you can never be more righteous than you are right this minute? When you took that cup, you just put on the full righteousness of God in Christ. So that means that everything about me is now perfect in God's eyes. But Larry, Larry, I still screw up. It. Yeah, that's why it's it's a covering. It says I am hidden in Christ. So I'm learning to walk in the freedom that he gave me covered by his righteousness. So you know what I never need to think about again? Am I in? Am I okay? Am I good? Am I out? Have I lost it? Do I need to confess and repent? Take all that theology which is man-made and chuck it out the door. Now, from this position that I am spiritually perfect, Lord, how do I walk this out of the natural? How do I receive your blessings? We, if you follow us on Facebook, I'm going to tell you a big, giant secret right now. Heather writes 99% of all the posts that have my name on it. 99.9. .9. So she's the rubble rouser. So she put up something about God's not going to bless you if you're hurting people. And immediately we got all these scriptures about we've been cleansed by the blood. And what does that have to do with this? See, I'm now righteous, I'm restored, I've been connected back to the Father, but I can still live like an idiot or an ignorant person because they'll get mad about the idiot comment. So now I have an issue of I have bad habits, I'm not sinning, I need to renew my mind, and I need to understand how do I receive what God has for me. I got rebuked by somebody who said, uh, you know, everybody in the church prayed for my, my spouse and they're still not healed. So is it an issue of God not wanting to do it or is it an issue that there's a challenge with you receiving it? So the church doesn't have a sin problem, it has a receiving problem. And the number one problem is you still have a consciousness of the law, good and bad. That's just bare, that's bare minimum. You know, you do something and you immediately go, oh, was that, was that good or... Or is that bad? You know, is God upset? Is he not going to want to do it? How come it hasn't happened? And then the enemy comes in and beats the living daylight side of you with guilt and shame. It's not God. So we need to get to the point where we're not thinking I'm good or bad. I am. I believe as scripture says, as he is today, so am I. Well, where's Jesus at? He's sitting on the throne. So where am I spiritually? I'm on the throne, so I can't get any more closer to God. I can't get more righteous. I'm not working to be, I am. So now I'm going to set that whole part of my life aside. I am righteous. Now, you know, the only thing that I do with that is I thank Him every day. That's all I'm just thinking. 
Now, how do I receive the blessings? How do I receive my healing? How do I get, you know, relationships straightened out, kids straightened out, my health straightened out? How do I get all that? Well, now that's based on you receiving and understanding God's kingdom and how it operates. And the gasoline that runs the kingdom or the power or the battery that runs the kingdom is your faith or trust. I trust God. I never trusted God for finances. And guess what? I had trouble with my finances. Always. 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 Every stinking day. I would worry. I would stress. What am I doing wrong? So you can have trust in God in certain areas of your life and not have them in other areas. So we just need to grow. If there's a challenge in this area, then that's just an area that we need to probably lay down some old theology or old understanding and grab this new understanding. Yeah, Larry, but you don't understand the world's going crazy and I think Jesus is coming any day now. Well, I hate to break it to you, brother, but you're going to be really disappointed because it ain't happening. It ain't happening now. What do you mean? Jesus said, I'm coming back for a church without spot or blemish, and we've been trying to clean ourselves. Have we not? If we look at the church organization for 2,000 years, they've tried to be worthy. They don't know they have no spot or blemish. Now what they don't understand and what we've never did is the church is walk in authority. How do you pray? Lord, please. Lord, if it's your will. Lord, please. It's a begging, isn't it? No. The scripture says I come boldly, boldly to the throne of grace. That's because of my righteousness. Because of what Jesus said, I can boldly come to the Father and I can make my request or whatever it is known to him. But now we, we have a different thing like healing. When Jesus anointed the apostles and sent them out, was their prayer ever, Lord, would you heal this person? They spoke over it. Did Jesus ever ask the Father to heal anybody? No. No, he spoke over it. So are we not God's representation on the earth now? Are we not the body of Christ? Are we not supposed to be emulating him? When you come up after service for healing or deliverance, do I think it's me? I know it ain't me, because I know me. Me's, uh, me's got all kinds of issues still. But I know God has called me so that when I speak, it happens not because of me, because there's faith on you and there's trust on me that God's going to flow. Praise Amen. Amen. Yeah, that was all free. <laughs> We've been... We've been going through the book of Ephesians to the church of Ephesus. We already had two chapters under our belt, so if you haven't, you need to probably get your phones out right now and look at the last two weeks of messages. Not right now. Okay. <laughs> Paul, Mike, you know the anointing's growing up. Amen. He almost made me cry again this morning. <laughs> So Paul is probably 30-some years into his ministry when he writes his letter to the church of Ephesus. Now, Paul most likely is in his either first or second imprisonment in Rome. He knows he's ran his race. He knows he's at the point that he's going to be poured out like a drink offering. So he's writing the theology down that he's taught for the last 30 years. So he's very methodical on what he's writing down. So if we want to get a picture of what the gospel is or what God's intentions are, 
We can read the book of Ephesians. We can work, read the book of Galatians, and it, it probably is almost a mirror of Ephesians. He's going to go precept by precept of what God's plan is. So the first two chapters, I don't remember what I taught on, but we're going to go to chapter 3 now. <laughs> Thank you, Gigi. I had a, a chuckle. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ. Now, why does Paul say that? Why does he use that term? I think in uh, King James it says, I'm a slave of Christ. Paul is saying, I know I've been bought and paid for by Jesus. I know that I have a calling on my life. I don't have my own life anymore. Amen. Now, all of us say, what, what does that mean, me? No. You are not called to be Paul. You're called to be you. Amen. Now, whatever that is, as you walk that out, it's going to be blessed and wonderful. There'll be trials, there'll be tribulations, there'll be fiery darts, but it'll be the life that God's given you. So I can't take this and say, oh, I must emulate Paul as I'm a slave. Now, because I am in ministry, I can relate to it more than if I'm a truck driver or a teacher or a dentist or whatever. Because I have a very specific calling on my life. But you have a calling for whatever it is, your career, you know, to be a good husband, to be a good wife, to be whatever your career is. And then the other part is your biggest ministry tool is your life. When somebody looks at you, do they go, ooh, wow, what, what, what is it about you? I wish my life was like yours. God said, Jesus said, I believe, or Paul wrote it, he said, we're to make the Jews jealous. Jews being the law keepers. Those under grace should make those under the law jealous. How come you're not stressing in confession all day long and just you know, repenting and thinking about your sins? Because they're done. They're taken care of. I can move on to other things. You know, the, the law is the playground of the enemy. Guilt and shame. Mm -hmm. Does the devil ever attack you with how righteous you are? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you're just so wonderful. You're right on track. No, he says you're a lousy, no good. And he starts pointing out shortcomings. Mm -hmm. But if I don't have the law mindset, guess what? Those darts just come over and just keep going. <clears throat> or they just bounce off. Bing. So Paul says, I know who I belong to. I'm a prisoner of Christ Jesus. For the sake of you Gentiles. you Gentiles. Amen. Now, Gentile means non-Jew. <laughs> That's either an ethnic Jew or a spiritual Jew. Okay? <clears throat> Verse 2. If indeed you have heard of the administration of God's grace which was given to me for you. you. So Paul has a very distinct calling. It is for the non-Jew, the unsaved, mm -hmm. those who have no relationship with God, those who were not raised in Judaism. So he is teaching us the gospel to the Gentiles. The church has taken Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and said that's our gospel and tried to apply it, apply it to us. Jesus in the Gospels, he says, when the lady, Neo, what was she? Syrophoenician. Thank you. This is my scholar in the front row, Heather. <laughs> I tracked her down and trapped her and took her prisoner 20 years ago. <laughs> she fought hard, but I won. <laughs> so this was a non-Jew comes to Jesus and says, my daughter is demonized. Will you help her? Yes. Now, Jesus helped every single person who came to him, but he turns to her and says, no, he actually ignored her. He just ignored her. And finally, the apostles came up and said, Jesus, this lady keeps bugging us. Send her away. And the lady just came up to Jesus mm -hmm. and spoke to him. Right. And he then says this amazing thing. I have only come 
for the lost tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. So now we have a revelation. Jesus is only preaching to the Jews under the law. Mm -hmm. So everything he says is to a law person. So if I take everything that he says in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and just try to apply it straight to me, I'm going to miss it. When Jesus said, you know, some of you guys say that uh, if you go out and commit adultery, mm -hmm. you know, that's a, that's a sin. If you sleep with a woman, you commit adultery. I say, if you have thoughts of it in your head, you've already committed the crime. Mm -hmm. Now, he's not talking to me. Mm -hmm. He's talking to Jew who thinks he's going to keep the law. Mm -hmm. I keep saying Jew, that could be a derogatory term. The Israeli, the, the children of Israel. He's talking to a person who thinks they're keeping the law. The law came in to show us that I am unrighteous. There's nothing I can do in me to restore myself back to Christ. Mm -hmm. Paul calls it the tutor. Mm -hmm. But once I become born again, I don't need the tutor anymore, mm -hmm. right? Right. And he uses words like this. He says, I've now died to the law, mm -hmm. or I've died to Mr. Law so I can be married to another. <laughs> so if I've died to the law and I'm married to another, why do I have the Ten Commandments over the, the hallway in my house? Not why there. is it in my church? Why is it in my Sunday school class? Not there. Paul goes on to say the law is the ministry of death. 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 Paul says, nobody is made righteous by the law. law. And yet we keep pushing it on the body of Christ. Mm. Mm. I don't want the law. I don't want to touch the law. I don't want to have anything to do with the law. Because I'm saved. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I won't. I've lost my, I've lost my little magic box back there. I need, I need some little hands, honey. Technical, technical issues. Yeah. They slipped off my stretchy pants. It's just supposed to clip. It's just supposed to clip. Sorry. Meanwhile, there's a lady messing around my britches. She's dressing room. Gone down your pant leg. Now, what was I talking about? No laws, death. Man, that was just sidetracked. Holy Spirit's leading you. Got it. The law came to show you that you can't achieve righteousness or be reconciled back to God. So once that part is done, we're done. But the church has been pushing that on us for 2,000 years. So if you're spending every day trying to be righteous, what are you not doing? You're not walking in your authority. Right. And that's where we're at right now. The church is going to start walking in its authority. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's do it. Hallelujah. So we are to push back darkness. Jesus said, I've come to set the captives free, open blind eyes, mm -hmm. and destroy the works of the enemy. Amen. Are you doing that? Yeah. Is so. it is that is it do you see it manifesting in your church? Yes. Yes. It's here. If you here don't now. see it manifesting in your church, they're not bad people, but they're missing something. Mm. Jesus. They're missing something. Praise God. The Gentiles. So Paul is writing to the Gentiles. <clears throat> so he was given a grace just for us that by revelation there was made known to me the mystery as I wrote before brief briefly. So there's a mystery about the Gentiles that Paul was given a revelation of. Hmm. As I write, wrote before briefly. So there's a good chance that Paul wrote another letter to the Church of Athena and it's been lost in, in time. Mm -hmm. But this one is going to be the full, almost said a bad word. word. It's going to be the fullness <laughs> of what he wants to teach. By referring to this, when you read, you can understand my, Paul's insight 
into the mystery of Christ, which in other generations was not made known to mankind, yeah. as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in the Spirit. Hallelujah. So when we transform from that old covenant of Abraham and Moses, we go into a new covenant of the cross. Right. So am I under the covenant of Abraham? No. It's been fulfilled. I'm glad Robin's here because she always agrees with me. Robin, thank you. <laughs> Am I under the covenant of Moses? We'll pray for you, Robin. No. <laughs> you know, I, people who want to go back and, and wear their prayer shawl and do all these things, it's like, do you not know that they all died? None of them became righteous. They all didn't make it. Jesus says to the Pharisees, Moses will condemn you when you stand before God, not me. Jesus never once said, my law. Never. And we've made the law so important, but Jesus had nothing to do with it. He didn't say it was my law. He kept on saying the law of Moses, the law of Moses, the law of Moses. And there'll be a day that if you think you're going to stand before God on your good works, Moses will condemn you. I don't want anything to do with the law. I run from it. Now, I didn't have this revelation. I used to have the Ten Commandments on my wall, and I would go, oh, yeah, I screwed that one up. It was a constant reminder of my failure. Does God want to remind you of your failure? Does he want to remind you of who you are, how much you're loved, how perfect you are, and you're now restored back to the Father? Beautiful. It's never going to happen under the law. So there's a mystery that Paul wants to release to us. Verse 6, to be suspicious... Specific. That's actually not even in there. Yeah. <laughs> that the Gentiles are... Okay, calm down. <laughs> that the Gentiles... All the educated people are smirking. You know, I went to school in San Bernardino. I am sorry. <laughs> I say that because I used to have two teachers from San Bernardino. They used to get so mad at me. There's something wrong. That the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel of which I was made a minister according to the gift of grace which was given to me according to the working of his power. What is Paul saying? <clears throat> I grew up thinking the Jews were special and that there was going to be these promises later on that they were going to get all of Israel and they were going to get all the land and, and that all this stuff was going to happen. Gentiles have been grafted in to the Jews who believed in Jesus. Amen. That's right. Listen to that. We have been grafted in to the Jews who believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Those who are in Israel who are still running around with their little curls, their little hat trying to keep the law, Jesus called them sons of the devil. <laughs> Now, the promises to, through Abraham, are now our promises. Christ man was a hearer and increase in learning, and a man of understanding and acquired wise counsel. Understand all. Who is Ice Man? That's not your husband's name, is it? Is that his thing? Ice Man's calling. Thank you for that. <laughs> Poor little Rita is redder than a tomato. <laughs> she looks like a little fire truck. <laughs> so when the promise of Abraham was, everywhere you walk, I will give you that land. Hallelujah. How do I pertain that through the cross? Hallelujah. 
Yeah. Everywhere I go, I got authority. Hallelujah. I got authority over this. God has given me this territory. Yes, Lord. I got authority. Thank you, Jesus. And if I use it, I can take away everything from the enemy. Hallelujah. But if I'm still trying to be righteous, if I'm still trying to make sure I'm saved, I'm never pushing back the enemy. I have to do a fundamental change of my thinking. If you're saved, if you're not saved, we can take care of that real quick. But if I'm saved, I need to start pushing back. And I start in my life. Hallelujah. If the enemy has beaten the crud out of you, if you feel horrible, if you are overcome with dread, sadness, hopelessness, the enemy has got too much foothold in your camp. And you need to kick him out. Once you kick him out of your camp, now I can start pushing him out of the neighborhood, out of my family, out of my adult children. So we're now part of the promise that God made to Abraham. Well, what about Moses? What about the law? Deuteronomy 28, if you diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord and follow all my commandments, all these blessings shall come upon you and overcome you. You go back to Deuteronomy 24 and it says, if you do not diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord, all these curses will come upon you. So now, how do I take that promise in Deuteronomy 28 and apply it to me? <coughs> Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law, I come to, to fulfill it. it. So guess who the law keeper was? Jesus. Yeah. Where am I? In Christ. In Christ. In guess what I am? Lawkeeper. Uh, guess so what promise can I stand on? Jesus. I can say those are mine. Yes. But if I'm still trying to be righteous, I ain't going to get it. Right. If I know that I know that I know that I know, I can go, you know what? I have a blessed church. I have a blessed business. Yes. I am blessed. Because I am blessed. Yes. Amen. I thank you, Lord. I have authority. Yes. I speak over the storm. Mm -hmm. I speak over issues. Amen. I don't go in the corner and go, Lord, what's going to happen? Hallelujah. I've done that for years. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. We lost our house back in the the big housing debacle. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting, we had a walk-in closet. It was a nice little house. I was in the walk-in <laughs> closet laying on the floor crying. Because it was Heather's house. It was, you know, it was her. It was, the whole thing was, it was a blessing to her. She had her, she had a house that she owned. And I felt it was my fault we were losing. I had no idea who I was. On the word of another man, I bought this house. He was a minister. And on his word, I went to this lender. I went to this broker. I got a 80-20 loan. In four years, my house payment went up $700 a month. Couldn't afford it, and we lost the house. We were the first people in our church to lose the house. And so you know what they did? Hey, because you've lost your house, you can't be on the prayer team anymore. That's crazy. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, no. That's Two years later, every pastor in that church lost their house. Crazy. I, I, didn't I kid you not. Out of 13 pastors and half of the staff, all of them had done the same thing we did. They all lost their houses. Crazy. See, we don't know. If we don't know who we are, if we don't understand the Holy Spirit lives inside of me and he's there all day long to whisper to me, we're running around on our own wisdom and our own understanding. Verse 8, to me, the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ. So the whole mystery mm -hmm. is about Jesus and what he did. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know who it's not about? It's not about you <clears throat> and what you did. It's about what he did for you Amen. and you receiving Thank it. You. You get attacked with guilt. Used to. Now there's always going to be a fiery dart. But if it takes you out for the day or for the week or, or, or for the month or the years or whatever. There's a stronghold in you. Overcome with dread. 
the IRS calls or I get a letter from the IRS and I would just like melt to a puddle on the floor. Mm. Now it's like, oh, okay. Uh. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? And it's, uh, I either deal with it or I don't deal with it, but I don't carry it anymore. Yeah. So it's all about Jesus and what he did. If I don't understand what he did, how can I walk out life? If I don't understand his love for me, if I don't understand his gift of righteousness, what did you do at communion? First time I took communion, they handed them out. Pastor said, take a moment and see if you're worthy to receive. <laughs> So everybody got quiet and started thinking about their sins. And if you turn around, everybody's going, Lord, I confess this. I've ever forgiven me. And everybody started focusing on who? Himself. <clears throat> Do this in remembrance of. And the pastor just came up and made you all think about yourselves. I hate communion. I hate it. I hate it. Because guess what? I always felt guilty. And then I listened to a man talk and I. That filter came off, and I went back and read it, and I said, we've been lied to. Mm -hmm. yes. This is all about a celebration. Jesus. It's not to see if I'm worthy. This is a, this is a party. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm free. Yes. I'm righteous. Yes. I can just receive that healing. I don't, I don't need to go it's run mine. around and beg and find the anointed man to get it. I can just receive it. Receive now, if you're having a problem, receive it. Go find the anointed woman or the anointed man and have them pray over you. If you need help, that's fine. That's why God made ministers. But when you understand who you are, you just receive it. Amen. John 3.16. You guys are going to get out of here so early today. We're done. I'm closing up right now. I got one more slide. It's all done. John 3, 16. Well, we go to the football game. We see the clown. John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God's judging America said the pastor on TV. Mm. Katrina came to New Orleans because New Orleans is full of sin. God is judging New Orleans. If God doesn't destroy Las Vegas, he needs to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> came to save. He came to save. Verse 17. Is that in your Bible? Look at Mr. TV yeah. preacher? For God did not send the Son into the world into the world to judge the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. Wow! Now look, now this is you want to know about judgment? Here it is. The one who believes in him. Well, I'm a really big tithe, and I'm at church three or four times a week. No. Do you believe in him? Is not judged. Uh-uh. God's not judging you for anything. Jesus. Now, will there be a judgment in heaven yeah. for the saved? Reward. What's it going to be for? Reward. Yeah. He's going to show us our life. He's going to show us everything I messed up on. No, that's already been, that book's erased and been thrown away. Yeah. The book of all your guilt, the minute you put faith in Christ, is thrown away. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now he's going to pull out a book that's the book of your life that God had planned for you. And he's going to say, you know what? You did that. Oh, and you did that. And you did that. And you did that. And you did that. I'm going to reward you for that. Nice. Why is he going to wipe away tears? Why would you be crying in heaven? For the ones who get to heaven and he goes, I had all this planned for you. And you only got the first paragraph. Because you were too busy trying to be righteous. You were too busy trying to be good. That's what the tears are going to be, that I didn't fulfill my calling. Mm. So now, when I had that revelation, I'm going, oh, man. Let's go. I was kind of stinky until I was 40 years old. Mm. I did stuff I don't want anybody to see that video of. It's gone. It's so gone. God sent the prophet to me at 50... 
some years old, and laid out this amazing plan for the rest of my life. Hallelujah. Hmm. And I, I'm going, you know, I'm creeping up on 60. I'm 65 now. And then his last part of the word is, everything that God had planned for your life, he will finish <laughs> in the time that you have, have left. left. Hallelujah! <laughs> Praise God! Are you kidding me? So when I was out there smoking the crack pipe and doing all that craziness, the Lord said, okay, you came back here, now I'm going to fulfill everything I had for you in the years that you have left. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You can do that Praise with anybody. God. So you know what? I start confessing every day. I want 120. Oh, there you go. Yes. I want 120. Yes. Why, not? Why not? Abraham went 175. <laughs> you know, at 100, when all his plumbing stopped working, and then he had Isaac, and then Sarah passed, he got married and had three or four more kids. <laughs> Little stud muffin Abraham, 150. Oh. Hey, baby. <laughs> what? He Are you? <laughs> okay, well, let's take all that out. Yeah. God took a man <laughs> and had him live to 175 years because of why? He believed in God. Yes. He trusted God. Yes. So wherever you're at today, Start trusting God, and He can fulfill your Every, life. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. So there is no judgment. Now, we're seeing judgment on the earth right now. But this is what the judgment is. The judgment is against the enemy. Yes. And those who have sold out. There's no redemption for them who have become children of the, the enemy. There will be destruction for them. Mm -hmm. So we see our world in chaos right now. They're trying to start a war in Europe, World War III. It's not going to happen. They're going to try and do it. The pandemic. The jabs. It doesn't matter where you're at politically. There are more people dying of heart attacks now than there ever have. More people with heart issues. But God says, I can redeem all that. Amen. Come on. We had a lady call us and said, husband's in the hospital. Been there for a long time. Can't get healed, can't get healed, can't get healed. Heather did a prayer. Said, take this. She voiced it on her, her phone. Just put this up to his ear. Next day, he got up and left the hospital. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Praise God! Hallelujah! Woo. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let's go back to our verses. Verse 9. To enlighten all the people as to what the plan of the mystery is, which for ages has been hidden in God, who created all in all. So there's a mystery, which is God is going to take the non-Israeli people, the Jews and the, the Gentiles, and combine them with the Jews to create one person. Beautiful. Paul says there is neither Jew nor Greek. Greek means Gentile. There's neither male or female in Christ. Oh, women can't preach. It's right there in the Word. There is no distinction male or female in the kingdom. There's just children. It's a whole nother teaching. <laughs> so that the manifestation, the multifaceted wisdom of God might now be made known through the church. Who's the yes, church? Us. To the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Ooh. So God is going to use the church to bring the revelation to Rulers and the Those are the same words where Paul says we do not fight against principalities and power, against flesh and blood, but against principality and powers. God is going to use the church to reveal to the fallen angels who are the powers in the heavenly what his plan is. So as we start walking in the fullness of who God has called us to be, the enemy is going, oh crud. Uh -huh. Oh no, wow. We don't have to deal with one Jesus. There's now thousands of them all over the place. <laughs> That's right. 
It's like the Matrix. <laughs> the one scene with the guy multiplying, there was like hundreds of them. That's what it is. When the enemy looks at us, he's going to see Jesus. If we know who we are and if we're walking in the fullness yes. of who God has made us. Yes. God. Yes. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness, boldness and confident boldness. access through faith in yeah. him. I come to God because I have faith and confidence in who I am in Christ, yes. not because I've been good. Jesus. Now, with that being said, do I need to just live my life willy-nilly and just no. keep it indulging all the debauchery and stuff? No. But as long as I'm trying to fix me, I'll never fix me. If I understand I'm already perfect, then I go, Lord, there's this issue. I have this issue or that issue. The Lord says, okay, in me, you can get victory over that. Yeah. And we'll address a little bit of that at the end. So, the eternal purpose. Did you ever go to church and they said, well, you know, when Adam fell, God had to go to plan B. Mm. You ever hear that? Yeah. <clears throat> you guys didn't church hop enough. enough. Oh, I heard it all the time. It says the eternal purpose of God was to create a man that was in his image. Do you think Adam was the first humanoid living on the earth? It was the first time God made a humanoid in his image. A three-part being that was going to have authority and kingship. He was going to have creative power and leadership on the planet. That's a side story. All right. But it was his eternal purpose. So there's no mistake. There's no plan B. That God didn't have to turn to Jesus and says, "Okay, man, well, I got to send you. I got to send you to Earth and die." It was. They used the terminology. Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the earth. So before we even created the earth, God already knew Jesus was going to be crucified mm -hmm. for the sins of man that He created in the garden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have access because we have faith in. Jesus. Yes. Amen. Therefore, I ask you not to become discouraged by my tribulations in your behalf, since they are your glory. Wow. If you know that Paul, under commission from God, was willing to die for you, how special are you? Very. Extra special. Bonus. So when Paul had his Damascus Road thing, God said, or Jesus said, bring Paul to me. I must tell him what he will suffer for me. So Paul was given a unique calling, which was the type of Jesus. Paul was going to pour his life out for the Gentiles. Now that's not our calling. We have a different calling. Figure out your calling. But Paul said, look, you're so you're so wonderful. You're so important to God that he wants me to do this. And I said I'm willing to do it because I will get rewarded in heaven for what I'm doing. When did Paul walk the earth? 2,000 years ago. Who are we talking about this morning? Paul. We're talking about what he did. What an honor. It says in the New Jerusalem that the foundation will be made with the names of the apostles. The apostles. You think Paul's name is there or Judas's name? Paul. It's Paul. Paul was the replacement for Judas. We call him the super apostle because of the great revelation that God gave him. He said he went to heaven numerous times. He didn't know if it was in the body or in the spirit. Paul says, I saw things in heaven I can't even say. Hmm. So Paul knew what he was doing when he accepted the mantle. Yes. So Paul's saying to the, the church of Ephesus, I've been whipped three or four times, 30, you know, 39 whips. I, you know, I, I died by the snake. I was shipwrecked. He says, don't worry about my tribulation. I know what I signed up for. Wow. Come on. 
So what we need to do is make sure that we embrace what Paul has signed up for, that we, we need to hear, we need to embrace, we need to walk in. I need to walk in the fullness of what Paul is telling me. Yes. It's important. Amen. That's what we're signing up for. Huh. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Verse 14. For this reason I bend my knee before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. Mm -hmm. Now, he's not saying, you know, that the Smith family or the Joneses. That's not what the word name means. When we say in the name of Jesus, do we need Jesus' name? Or when you look at the Greek word, it means everything that this name brings up about that person. So when I say in the name of Jesus, it's the Messiah. It's the chosen one. It's the Lamb of God. It's the one who takes away the sins of the world. It's the one by his stripes I am healed. So it's that name is everything that that person is. That's right. And so we get all our identity from who? Jesus. Jesus. Through the Father, through who we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That he would grant to you, according to his riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power wow. through what? The Spirit, yes. Through the Spirit. Yes. The Spirit. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump and kick another cow over, and i sorry if I offend you. <clears throat> I will never water baptize anybody ever again. Why? John comes and says, I am the Lamb. Here comes the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world that I'm not even worthy to touch his shoelaces. I baptize you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit in fire. Whoa. There's two word baptism there. The first one is, is a word that means you got wet. <laughs> The second word is you were dunked and you became something different. Mm -hmm. So water baptism is they were they were repenting or changing their mind about following the law. But when they followed Jesus, they were baptized into the Holy Spirit and fire. Wow. Yeah. That baptism in the Spirit and the fire is what sets you apart from every other person on earth. Glory to God. Lord. <clears throat> to strengthen you through his spirit in the inner self so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. faith. And that you being rooted and grounded in love. Mm -hmm. So what do we need to be grounded in? Love. We have faith, we trust God, and that he loves me. Faith. If I don't understand how much I am loved, I'm going to have a challenge Receiving what God has for That's me. Because right. I'm going to still think there's something wrong with right. me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have that good or bad mentality. So it says, we're blessed being rooted and grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the height and the depth. To know the love of Christ. Yes. Which surpasses knowledge that yes. you may be filled to the fullness of God. Yes. Now... If you read this without the filter on you, it says, as I embrace the love of God and I trust Jesus, I can be filled with the fullness of God. That's amazing. Yes. Amen. That's just beyond. That's I know. Beyond. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Now to him who's able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. Mm. Now to him who's able to do far more. more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think mm. according to the power that already is in us. So the power to get everything that we want, everything we desire is already in us. Wow. To him, Jesus, be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. When Jesus came down as God, he set aside his deity and came as a man. 
He operated as a man with anointing, not as God on the earth. So that he could be the first of many brethren. So we operate as a man filled with God. And Jesus did it first. So the church is supposed to be the fullness of who God is. Is God broken? No, no. Is God depressed? Is no. God upset? Is God no. lacking? So these are the things that we need to grow in and embrace for our personal life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He wants to, us to embrace it in our personal life and then to push outward. Amen? Amen. And then what? And then what? <clears throat> push out. If we spend all day thinking about me, send out. Send out. I'm not going to be thinking about you. In John 10, 10, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I come so that you may have life, life in the fullest measure. Another way that Greek word says the life, uh, the Zoe life, nothing broken, nothing missing. If I am not receiving that in my life, so I examine myself, I look at me, I don't look at you guys. I look at me. Are there things that I have not received from God through Christ? Is there still areas that I need to get freedom in? Is there still areas that I need to tear down the stronghold? Or is there areas that I need to crucify the flesh? Both and. So there's some things. <laughs> well, it's true. All of us. So yeah. here are some things that keep us from walking in the fullness. I lack understanding. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. I haven't been taught the truth. Right. Or bad teaching. Mm -hmm. Here's the biggest one. I have a hurt or an offense. Mm -hmm. If Heather offends me, can I truly love her? Yeah. 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 She offends you. If I'm offended at her, I'm mad. I'm offended at God. Mm. Can I receive from him? Mm -hmm. If something horrific has been done to us by a parent, a neighbor, a friend, you know the first thing that comes into your mind you don't even realize is why did God allow this to happen? Mm. So you're mad at God. You have an offense yeah. against God. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I didn't realize I was mad at God. Right. Mm. Until we really got to the point of doing deliverance. Mm. 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 Why would you send me to a mother who didn't want a boy? Mm. I, was, mm. I was dealt a, a deck of cards I could never win with. Mm. When you're four or five years old and you heard that your mother didn't want you, that she dressed you like a girl when she brought you home from the hospital, mm. does that not set rejection in? So now all of a sudden, it's, it's, I'm trying to walk in the fullness of what God has given me, but I have these rejections and hurts mm -hmm. that the enemy then comes in and builds a stronghold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God didn't like you. Mm -hmm. Your mother never loved you. Your father never loved you. Nice. That first girlfriend who dumped you like a hot potato, she did. And all of a sudden, we've got all this rejection built up. Mm -hmm. Now when we have rejection, what happens? We start trying to compensate and we go to the natural. We eat too much, we spend too much, we drink too much, we chase boys or girls, we, we, we're angry, we're mad, we fight. And all these behaviors come in because of that offense or hurt. Mm. Now, if I understand how much I'm loved by God, but there's a demonic stronghold, or if the God of this world has blinded me to the truth of the gospel. I've had learned men come in and argue with me that we need to keep the law. Oh, crazy. And I'd read a scripture they said, yeah, but we, we follow the golden rule of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is saying to people, if you love me, you'll follow my commandments. Mm -hmm. If you read on, it says that you're to love one another exactly. and love the Lord. He says, if you walk in love, you fill the requirement of the law. Yeah. Who is love? 
Christ. If I walk in Christ, I fulfill the covenant of the law. Mm -hmm. But see, if the blinder from the enemy is on you, I could, I could preach that all day long, and you're going to leave today going, that's not true. That's not true. Or they're going to tell me, so you just say we could go sin? I never said you could go sin. No, you didn't. Matter of fact, I never said the word sin. I used the word bad habit. Now, somebody will write a comment on Facebook that something about we can't be sinners and whatnot. If I die to the law, how can anything be a sin? It's a bad habit. So, lack of understanding, bad teaching, and offense. The God of this world is blind me. There's a demonic stronghold. And then there's free will. I have a lot of traffic through my office. People come, they want prayer. They call me. And I'll pray for them. I'll give them some wisdom. And they go right out the door and go back to doing what they were doing. So was that a stronghold? Was that an offense? Or was that free will? Well, before we walked in deliverance, it was a demonic stronghold and their free will. So now that we understand deliverance and people don't want to receive that, then that's, that's you. Because God never, God never gives you more than you can handle. So even when I was in the middle of the pit doing my crack cocaine, I still had the ability to say, Lord, I need help. I give up doing it my way. Amen. And that immediately opened the door for the yes. Lord to come in and start yes. working in my life. Yes. Yeah. So, if there are things that you need help with, if you need deliverance, if you need understanding, if there's sickness in your body, mm. I'm giving you an opportunity this morning to take care of it. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Jesus. I'm going to go into ministry, but I just want to take care of some <clears throat> business aspects. I thank everybody for coming. Anybody following us online, if you would like to support the ministry, you can do it online, or if you're here in the house, um, you thank can you, fill Jesus. out an envelope, put it in the basket. It's between you and God, Father. I thank you for all those who sow, all those who support. I thank you that they grow in the revelation of who they are, who you've made them to be, who they are in Christ, and that they can receive everything that you have for them in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. 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 Does anybody need healing in their body now? Come on up. Good morning, sir. How can I help you? Pardon? You feel like you're sick? Or you're attacked with sickness? How about if I, I do some other things? Can I do some other things too? I want you to renounce fear. I renounce all the plans of the enemy. I declare that I will not receive any sickness. In Jesus' name, I just detach this young man of all those things that he just renounced. And any demonic influence is coming on him. I command those spirits to come off of him at the count of three. One, two, three. Out. Oh. And I just release fire into him to heal him in his body, every part of his body, so that there's nothing missing and nothing broke. Anybody else need healing? <clears throat> Is anybody fighting depression or overwhelmed fear or dread? Yes, sir. You just saying hi? Mighty man of God in training. If you get overwhelmed with fear, dread, 
Or if you have any other strongholds, let's take care. Yes, sir. How can I help you? Say the last part again. I'm trying to fill the law. You're trying to fill the law. Okay. You know what Paul calls the law? He also calls it the ministry of death. It'll kill you. Jesus tells two parables. He says, I cannot take new wine and put it in the old wine skin because it'll destroy the wine skin. You're the wine skin. You cannot put the gospel of grace and the law because it'll destroy you. So let's renounce. You're going to just say, I renounce all legalism. I renounce trying to keep the law. I renounce trying to keep the law. I renounce fear. I renounce fear. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a couple more in here. I'm gonna I want you to say I renounce the orphan spirit. I renounce the orphan spirit. The spirit that I'm all alone. The spirit that I'm all alone. The spirit of hopelessness. The spirit of hopelessness. Amen. Thank you, so in the name of Jesus, I detach you from all these things you renounced. And I command every spirit that's attached itself to you in these areas to come off at the count of three. One, two, three, out. Out. All spirits of fear, all spirits of abandonment, all spirits that I'm all alone. Everything that's telling you you're unworthy, I command them to come out of you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Out. And I release the fire of God to burn down all the strongholds, all the things that have been built up over your life, all bad theology, bad understanding, guilt, and shame, just burn out of you right now in Jesus' name. They're, they're trying to come out right now. I can feel them. Just open your mouth and blow. The love of God. The love of God. The love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He was vibrating like a, a, a bad running engine. He was just vibrating. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. And I don't know if it's like right now for me to just hear it. I mean, I just feel like that was something that I was sharing with my children. Okay. So I don't want to renounce that. Anything that any teaching before. Okay. Before great understanding grace. I renounce. This is you. I renounce. I renounce. All legalism. All legalism. Every religious spirit. Every religious spirit. All the guilt and shame. All the guilt and shame. Yes. I put on myself. I put on myself. Mm. My spouse. My spouse. My children. My children. I renounce all fear. I renounce all fear. In the name of Jesus, I detach my sister from these things and every spirit. That's come and attached itself to her in these areas. I command them to leave right now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Out in Jesus' Glory name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. This is the power of God. It's the of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Mary, come back. He's been waiting for you. In a good way. In a good way. God is moving on him. You know, he was talking about you before I came to church. He just wants you free of everything. Praise God. Don't feel the same. But anyway, what did you what did you want? Just anger, hurt, and pain. Okay. Hurt and pain and anger always come from a sense of abandonment, an orphan spirit. If there's an absent parent in your childhood, if there was any violation to you, if there was emotional trauma, uh, any of those things will separate you. And God says, God wants to be our daddy. <laughs> you know, I had parents that had no ability to emotionally love me. But they were both in the house. But there was an emotional detachment. So I, I want you to repeat. I renounce. I renounce. All rejection. All rejection. Orphan spirit. Orphan spirit. All the anger, all the anger, and all the fear, and all the fear, that has come into me through those areas. It's come into me through those areas. In the name of Jesus, I detach my brother from these things. I command every spirit that attaches itself to him yes. to come out of him in Jesus' name. At the count of three, one, two, three, out. Oh, hallelujah! hallelujah. Out. Hallelujah. All of you things. They've been in there since childhood, really young, like four or five years old. 
You just have to come out of him right now. Jesus. Jesus. Spirit of I'm not good enough. Yeah. The lie, it's a lie. I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of hopelessness is never going to get better. That I'll never be a good husband or a good father. I'll always be missing the mark. Those are lies from the enemy. The Lord mm -hmm. said, I made you to be a wonderful husband yes. and a wonderful father. So all those spirits come out of him right now in Jesus' Hallelujah. name. Out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Holy Spirit. Feeling a gurgling in your tummy? Yeah. See, they dwell, they dwell in the physical realm. So they're not in your spirit. They're actually mm -hmm. physically attached to your, mm -hmm. your your emotions. And so they're down here. And so what I'm gonna ask you to do a an act of faith. I want you to blow out three times. Mm -hmm. Just <sighs> out. <coughs> out. Glory. Every lion spirit yes. come out of him now in Jesus' name. Oh, Glory to God. You know, when, when we command those spirits to come out, they're going to come out. They're going to come out right now. They're going to come out later today. They're going to come out tonight. They're coming out. Praise God. Okay? But what you have to do so that they don't just do a, a circle and come back in, you have to fill that void with that new identity. When Jesus told the parable of the house, they come in, they, they, they cast the demons out, and they clean the house. If you, that house was empty when the demon came back, wasn't it? Yeah. He hadn't put the new identity in that That's house. Right. This is who I am in Christ. I am loved. I am righteous. I am accepted. I am blessed. And when you put it in the house, Hallelujah. then the enemy cannot Hallelujah. come back in and take up residency. Now, we're digging down into your life of a lifetime, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years of demonic influence. We might have to come back and do some more digging. But you should feel something right now. Any of you who got touched today, one of the things you'll notice is the noise in your head. The constant is gone. That's that accusing spirit that's nonstop talking to you. And then when something comes up, when something comes up in you of fear or anger or something like that, you're going to feel like, see, there it is right now. You feel like you're going to upchuck, don't you? It's, it's, that's coming up. It's okay. It's all right. When something manifests, deal with it. Hallelujah. How you doing? One-eyed wonder. Two-eyed. Her whole body. Your body. Okay, I'm going to give you a heavy revy right now. Okay? Two things are going on. Somebody is speaking over you. Okay? And you're taking the doctor's reports as the final word. So they give you a symptom and they say this, then you immediately come against that and say, no, I'm not receiving yeah. that. I speak over that. I, whatever my, my meds, whatever my numbers are that they're coming down and they're, they're going to be perfect. And if the, then, if you do have to take medication for a short period of time, then that's fine. Yes. I have not heard you yet renouncing generational curses. Um, Any, any of this come through the family bloodline? You don't know? You don't know if any of this was on your parents or grandparents? Grandparents were not really around. On my dad's side, they were around, but you know, they were calm and sweet and everything. No, I'm talking about 
spiritual infirmity, sicknesses. You, do, you don't know. What about your parents, your mother, your father? Maybe my dad. We'll see. I don't know. Well, you can ask the Holy Spirit right now. If you don't know in the natural what type of things came down, you can ask the Holy Spirit right now. It's one of the things I just heard was uh, there's a generational spirit. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. A curse. Go ahead. You do it. Ask the Lord to show you anything right now. He just read now. I know it. I see my father. He wasn't really around. Okay. I just want to renounce all generational curses. I renounce all generational curses. Yes. In Jesus' name, I detach you now from every single generational curse that came through the bloodline, every spirit of infirmity, every demon sent to attack this bloodline with various diverse illnesses. In the name of Jesus, I detach you from it and I command every spirit attached to spirits of infirmity and sickness and weakness and early death in Jesus' name to leave you now on the count of three. One, two, three, go. Every demonic spirit sent to harass you, to torment you, to have your body be in a state of constant weakness and pain and disability. Every one of those spirits must leave you now in Jesus' name. Out. Every spirit that you have verbally invited in by coming into agreement with the sickness. That's what Pastor Larry was talking about. We don't realize that Doors are open through agreement. It's a law God made, not the devil. But God says, if any two of you agree as touching anything on earth, it's a covenant. Now we're supposed to agree with Jesus. By his stripes, I'm healed. But if we come into agreement with what, like you said, the doctor, you actually had a physician pray over you here about a month ago. That's the profession she's in who prayed over you but her anointing is healing and so that's probably the only doctor the only physician who's ever spoken the word of faith over you and the healing so now it's i'm coming into agreement with jesus i'm coming into agreement with the stripes i'm coming into agreement with the word of god and i'm coming out of agreement with the enemy's attack against my life yes you make your confession of faith right here. I agree with that. I receive it. Are you coming into agreement with Jesus? Yes. Over all the yes. good things yes. that he has promised you and given to you already. Yes. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I release God's power of healing to your body right now. I release this anointing of complete healing in the new covenant from the head to the toe i release god's fire to you right now to burn out every sickness every disease every diagnosis against you and to burn up every covenant that you've ever come into agreement with that you had these things in jesus name I now declare your healing in every organ, in every system, in every part of your body. Come now. Healing. Manifest now. In Jesus' name, for the glory of God. For this is your bread, daughter of God. This is your portion. This is your portion. Healing, choice.
peace ministry. Touch of Jesus is so sweet and so gentle and yet so powerful. And I command all anxiety and fear to leave about any of these words that were spoken over you. With a long life will he satisfy you and show you his salvation. And everything that was wrote to you in Jesus' name those words that tried to stick to you, those sicknesses are being removed now because of the anointing. The anointing is destroying the yokes and removing every burden that we carry. Thank you, Jesus. You feel God's peace right now? Yeah, I feel like I'm going to breathe. Like, like beyond my body. You felt like he was breathing on your body? Like your body was able to breathe. Yes. Amen. 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 I know he's going to do it after a trial on your team. Oh, but not in that. Did you see that? No. It's coming. Your healing is here right now. Amen. Amen. It, there was a lot of baggies that was just taken off of you. It was like you're walking around with four or five overcoats on. And the Lord just took some off. How he just said, don't put them back on. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. She just felt like she could breathe and take a breath. That's the power of God. Miss Robin, how are you? I'm so good. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to say thank Come you on, for your on. awesome words from the Word of God. So powerful today, the both of you. Wow. Christ in us, the hope of glory, a mystery revealed, Colossians 1.26. I was so very touched. And then when you connected that to the word matrix, I was prophesied the word matrix so many years ago, and I never knew what I meant. it meant at all until just now. Matrix. The matrix... It was bringing people into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. It was bringing others into the Christ in us, the hope of glory. The duplication and the replication of his presence in the body of Christ. Bringing the bride of Christ. Bringing the bride of Christ into fruition. Letting people know about Jesus. Letting people know that he died for our sins. He shed his blood for us. That we could come in to the kingdom. And he rose again, and we are risen with him. Thank you, Jesus. Just wanted to share that I got the revelation today. The matrix. I never knew. Hallelujah. Father, all the residue that we pick up in life, the hurts, the pains, the unknown ones, I just detach my sister from all those things. I detach her from every lying spirit <coughs> that is hiding right now that is hiding right now I command them to come out all false holy spirits all false religion everything that is hiding I see them right now there where you go it's actually a spirit that came on in your childhood. It's like a familiar spirit. It's like a friend, a companion. I command it in the name of Jesus to come out of you right now. Every lying spirit, every false religious spirit, false holy spirit, every angel of light that is not from God, I command to come off of Robin right now in Jesus' name. You have no more place. You have no more right. You're not going to influence her life anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Saying, Come out. Thank you, Jesus. Come out of her right now. Oh. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. already been done. The Lord says two things I want you to do. Receive it and never mention it again. Never tell anybody. Never say this is happening. Never confess a, a symptom. But he says, I have healed you. You just receive it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You're on a journey. A journey to let go of the past. Everything that happened when you were a young little man running around doing your thing. The Lord says, any of that that was not of me, I just washed it away. Mm -hmm. It's not who you are anymore. You're a new creation, perfect, righteous. Amen. You're my child. You're accepted. Your destiny is the throne room of God. You don't have to fight. You don't have to try. You just have to receive. Now, when you lay down that old and you embrace the new, everything in your life is going to change. It's going to become alive, more vibrant. <laughs> You've been spending a lifetime trying to fix what happened yesterday, and it's impossible. That's why he said, I detached it from you. So you let it go, too. Okay? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? I want everybody to go ahead and stand up. Yes. I'm going to name off a couple things that if they apply to you, agree with it. I renounce, I renounce. All, night all night terrors. I renounce, I renounce. All, fear all fear from the enemy. I renounce all hopelessness. I renounce all hopelessness. I renounce that it's too late. I renounce all anger against myself, against those who've hurt me, and my disappointment with God. I, today I receive hope and a new life. And all, his favor, and all his favor, and all his grace, and all his, grace, and all his, love. And all his love. Every demonic spirit that is attached to you in one of those areas that you renounced, I command them to come out and come off of you now at the count of three. One, two, three, out. Every one of you must come out now in Jesus' name. I release the fire of God to those who want it. To those who want it. To burn out all the residue. All the old habits. All the old mindset. All the old thinking. That has kept me in the trap of the fowler. I let go of them and I embrace the newness of who I am in Christ. Father, I thank you for this amazing group of saints. I bless them, I speak favor and grace over them, and wherever they go, the presence of God goes with them, the favor of God goes before them, and Lord, you're constantly whispering your love and acceptance over them. We bless them now in Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. 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 Have a great day, guys, have a great week. Um, we have services on Wednesday night. Goodbye, buddy. We have services on Wednesday night. Um, we have an all-ladies service on Friday. Um, hope you can catch some of those. But embrace who God has made you to be. Oh, and also, I'm trying to put up several short bites a week. Let me know what you think of those. Those are on Facebook. Make a comment so I know you like it or don't like it. But be blessed. Amen. 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 Woo! <laughs>